to the fourth and most exciting installment of Tone Bogans to date. How are we all? Today we are looking at the third of the Muzizi pedals that I own. I still don't know how to pronounce this word here. I've been calling it Muzizi. It's probably different. I, I can't pronounce anything that's not in Australian, basically. So we just have a chorus pedal. Chorus, synonymous with Susie and the Banshees in my opinion. If you don't know who Susie and the Banshees is, welcome to the world. I hope you enjoy your stay. You must be incredibly young. YouTube, you would have had it since you were in Little Tucker, <laughs> basically. So we've just got, we'll get back to the pedal, sorry. Um, rate, depth and level. I've got the level dimed on this pedal because it's quiet. It's really quiet and really subtle, this pedal. I've also got my rate and my depth more towards the 9 o'clock actually, more like 10 o'clock, especially for rate. I like a lower rate. In terms of chorus and modulation, it is maybe a little bit difficult to understand at first. Great for things like phaser, flanger and chorus, which are all in the modulation family. They use frequency to... So rate is controlling frequency. My apologies. And when you have it down in this setting, you have a nice undulation. So think of the waves at the beach that are out past the breakers, the ones that just gently roll. That is what you're doing when the rate is low. When the rate is high, you've got these little tiny blips like this of your frequency. So that's why it sounds faster because it actually is. It's tapping into, as you go up the frequency scale, the wave file get, uh, the wave length gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So you are tapping into that high frequency, which is like a little buzz and the cycle of it is very, very, very close together. It is quite complex. And probably one of the better and more interesting things to learn if you ever want to become an audio engineer and know all that technical stuff. I think for me that was a revelation and I, I really enjoy telling people things that I thought were cool to start with. And the depth, it's they're, they're controlled together basically. So if you want, um, so if we've got our undulation again, we can have it so it's barely moving or we can crank the depth all the way up so that it is so it's slow but it, you can discern where like the top and the bottom of the waveform is going. So if you picture a pure sine wave, you have the cycle that starts at the top and then it goes all the way to the bottom and it's measured in length. It's very complex but very cool. I love a chorus effect. What we're going to do is we're going to play something in context of an ambient slash soundtrack song so that you can see the texture or so that you can hear the texture that's added when you engage a chorus pedal. This one is quite noisy when I click it so apologies in advance for that and I will see you back here after the riffs.
do love chorus. I think that pedal cost me $12. If you can find one, grab it. I think they're great. And I definitely don't think that it's a waste of $12 to have something like that in your arsenal. Especially if you're not sure about chorus, it's a really good way to get started. I feel like having a pedal version of something is different to using it in, say, Logic or whatever door you're using. I think they sound different. I think they sound different. My personal view is that it's harder to replicate the pedal settings in I'm using Logic. So I find that it just it, it lacks something or it I don't know, the algorithm doesn't match what I want. I'm not sure what it is, but I find it really hard to use in the door the way that I want it. So, I mean, 12 bucks, grab it. It's not gonna break the bank by any means. I do have other chorus pedals as well that were more expensive. So I've got the MXR Analog Chorus, which is Bucket Brigade. And I also have a Dan Electro one, which I think is called the Cool Cat. I haven't used it in a long time because I thought it was broken, but it's just the light and it's really subtle, so I don't know when it's working or not. And I just kept it because the pedal looks cool. And this $12 one, I think, sits in the middle of those two. The MXR, you can get these really wild and crazy Susie and the Banshees ice pick kind of chorus, which is great for some things, and I'll use it for soundtrack when I want a dissonant kind of effect, but I just love the texture that this is adding to my lo-fi ambient tracks. I have used it a few times in some of the videos that I've posted with the lo-fi ambient just numbered tracks. So go back and have a listen and see if this is something that interests you to add that little bit of texture, a little bit of something different. I mean, you can clearly hear it when the level is dimed, but what if we roll it back a bit? Is it going to just give us that little treble frequency boost? Who knows? Go and grab something that will emulate something like this. Um, so it doesn't have to be this one. Get a Behringer, get something really expensive if you've got the money, but I love modulation and I definitely think everyone should have one on their pedal boards. even. If you think you don't like it, you actually do. You don't know, but you love it. You love modulation. Yes, you do. So thank you so much for watching. This is the last time I'm going to say this for a while. Thanks for bearing with me while I hound you. Please like and subscribe because once I get to a thousand subscribers, my feature film Last Campsite will be on the YouTube platform on this channel for free and the only thing that you will have to do is watch an ad at the start. How cool is that? You don't have to do anything, you don't have to pay, you just have to watch an ad. Winning! Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.